Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we're here with a part, uh, partly a zoo tour of our city zoo. As you can tell, our zoo is becoming very, very big. I know a lot of people are asking me to do a complete zoo tour, but I'm not going to do that until our whole zoo is finished so for now you have to deal with like part of zoo tours so we already did a zoo tour of the australian area that we built right over here and a little bit of the african area with like the fennec fox and the meerkat i will link that one in the description there also is a very old zoo tour on the channel with like these first uh, buildings that we build. I will link that one as well in the description down below. It's it's obviously not the complete zoo tour, uh, but yeah, we are going to do it in in in, in parts. And uh, well, if the zoo ever finishes, then we are obviously going to do a complete zoo tour. Uh, but for now, we're going to uh, start in this region right over here behind the Australian area to show you guys what we did with the European animals from the Europe pack. But quickly, before we jump into it, let us thank our fantastic sponsor of the channel, Instant Gaming. At Instant Gaming, you can get your most favorite games with up to 70, sometimes even 90% discount. If you use the link in the description down below, you will get an amazing discount and you will also be supporting the channel. So whether you're looking for a discount on Planet Zoo, The Sims, City Skylines, Jurassic World Evolution, or any other game, go and check out the link down in the description. So let's go to this area. We have the rat kangaroo right over here. So we're going to start on this path section and we have this nice little bridge going towards the uh, African area right over here and then uh, Australian area on this side. We actually also have a North American beaver in here. The plan is to add uh, several beaver habitats throughout the whole zoo uh, so it looks like we have just beavers living here in the rivers, like more in the wild instead of like being actual habitats. I thought that would be a, a very cool idea, but I did not expand their habitat yet throughout this river. So that is still something uh, we have to work on. Also about the bridge, this is not the bridge from the Europac. Uh, the, I think the Europac bridges are only four meter in width and this uh, path or this bridge is six meter in width so this is just a simple bridge that i uh, made myself and duplicate around the whole zoo to stay in this uh, city zoo style vibe we have going on so right over here i have the european batcher habitat now the only thing is we are on pause as you can tell uh, I'm going to move around a lot in pause mode because as you can tell the zoo is very very big and it really lags a lot as soon as I uh, unpause the game. Hopefully this year I will be able to upgrade my computer and uh, hopefully uh, we uh, get less lag and it will all go a little bit smoother but as of right now it's still doable it's still doable for me to build in this zoo but yeah if it's unpaused and you want to move around and then, uh, then you start to feel the issues so uh, yeah for those wondering what my pc specs are the link is in the description down below if you are curious uh but yeah we have this uh, cute little uh badger habitat with this burrow right over here we do not have any um, billboard connected to it. I didn't really feel the need of um, adding this burrow to a webcam or anything like that, or, or like a billboard, to be completely honest. But let's just go right over here and then go around the whole habitat. So this is a pretty old little building. Imagine this being built like years ago and uh, there was a very small habitat here with like a small indoor building we will get there uh, once we go around this. Uh, but yeah, this this whole this building is still there. It's a very simple old older state building basically. And later on they uh, build this beautiful outdoor habitat for the European badger to enjoy. So we can go all the way around it. We have a little sign here for the education, of course. And now we go right over here. Every habitat still has this little P 
peak of like sunshine. Uh, everything is very dense and lush right over here. I'm, I think, very much inspired by a Dutch zoo, Rotterdam Zoo, which just always gives me the feeling that it's super foresty and stuff, even though it might not even be that much. But yeah, I just really uh, love to make it all uh, dense as if... Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just really do like the vibe we have going on right over here. Uh, but yeah, every habitat has like this uh, sunshine going through in the habitat. Also for the animals. I mean, many animals just really enjoy laying down in the sun, don't they? I mean, especially like big cats and stuff. They're just going to lay down. So I do really like that, even though it's, it's very lush and very dense and foresty. Um, we still have... This beautiful sunshine going through the habitat. It's amazing how much it lacks. <laughs> uh, so this is that little building, the keeper skate on this side, and then you have this uh, more indoor area. There's just a, a few rocks, uh, or, or one rock and a few branches, and that is basically it. It's it's very simple and uh, definitely an older state of the zoo, I guess. And uh, yeah, people can obviously sit down and chill everywhere. Gosh, it took so much time to put down all these bins and benches and stuff. So it's it's actually a good thing doing this in parts and not being like, oh yeah, when it's all finished, I'm going to do the uh, bins and, and lights and everything. Like that's gonna take forever, I guess. This is definitely one of my favorite habitats of this area, the Eurasian Lynx, um, inspired by... I'm not really sure actually what it is inspired of anymore. I think I just found a picture on Google of a Eurasian Lynx habitat, having this kind of front, so basically have a big cage. I should not say an aviary because then birds should live in there, but it still feels like an aviary, I, I, <laughs> but it's a big cage. <laughs> but I really do love... Uh, how this one has turned out. It's very flat. Uh, it does have like these climbing frames here for Eurasian links. I'm not really sure if there is Eurasian links nearby right over here. I don't think so. There's another of this big cage on the other side here connected. Uh, so they are probably right over there. I don't really think that I added any enrichment items here, did I? Not really sure. I'm very happy with the leaves here. For those that uh, are following my channel for a while now, you know that uh, recently we got these leaf patches with the Europe Pack. No, in the free update next to the Europe Pack. And I absolutely love them for the floorings of your uh, habitat. I, I think they look really great. And I'm really happy with this, um, this cage. <laughs> I... I'm really excited uh, that hopefully this year we're going to see a bird's pack or flying bird's pack, I should say. And then we can hopefully start creating some really cool apiaries as well. It's definitely something uh, that would really excite me, to be honest. Uh, so I'm really ready for that. Um, we can go around this whole habitat. Let's just follow this sign. This is the edge of the zoo. So you, I, <laughs> I just could not built any further right over here and then there are three different viewing galleries right over here all three are a little bit different <laughs> so all all three viewing galleries have a little bit of a different front just to give that a little bit of variation and there's obviously an enrichment item right over here and they as well have like this little indoor section, which is not even visible for the guests. I think this is only for the Eurasian Lynx to get in, take some shelter, and uh, maybe if the keepers uh, want them uh, to do and check on them or anything like that, or clean the habitat, they uh, bring them inside. There's also a little uh, uh, keeper's hut right over here, but what is new, is that we now have like this staff area on uh, this side so people can see a little glimpse of it this is the building style that we have at the zoo entrance on the left side so i just duplicated that building and made sure all the necessary buildings are in here for the staff to use so we have 
a vat, a trading center, a staff room, and a keeper's hut. And that is basically it. So actually this keeper's hut is not really needed anymore, but it's all right, it's all right. I think this looks absolutely great. Man, just imagine having a real aviaries here with lots of birds. Oh, that is gonna be so amazing. I really am, oh, I really want it. <laughs> Give it to me, Frontier. Um, so this is a backstage area. There's also the entrance for the uh, follow deer habitat. But first, let's go around right over here to make sure that we see the other area of the Eurasian lynx, which is right over here. So I did add like this animal talking point on this side. And as you can tell, this front is again, a little bit different than the other three, just for some variation in here. It's a pity though, that we can't really see. Oh, there they are. Okay, there we go. Let's go in here just because I <laughs> the sun and the glass just ruins a little bit of the viewing but just getting a little glimpse of the Eurasian lynx and this uh, aviary uh, big cage is as well a, like different type of um, elevations right over here so they can climb a little bit and jump a little bit and play a little bit there's also some hay beddings here and they can uh, lie down in the sun take some rest here if they want to and uh, yeah, I'm I'm really happy, oh, except for like the climbing part. <laughs> but I'm really happy with how this um, Eurasian lynx habitat has turned out. I am really really excited about this one. Uh, hopefully, it inspires you guys as well for the different type of habitat you can create in this game. And this is uh, the front of it. Uh, so yeah, the animal talking point right over here, just to get some guest, uh, guest flow right over here when it's time for the uh, animal talk and for some education. I think that is the only animal from the Europe pack that I find a talking point a little bit fitting for, but it's not like I want to have the seating areas or anything like that, to be honest. Um, so right over here we have the alpine ibex habitat and this one is a little bit more rocky and mountainish. Oh wait, what? Oh, I didn't know that that scarecrow actually would lose its hat itself. I did not see the animation of that one, this one. Oh, that's actually really funny. I should actually check that out someday. So yeah, the alpine, this one is not that, is it? You're not that, no. <laughs> they can't die in my sandbox mode, what am I even saying? Uh, but yeah, this habitat does have like these different height elevations, especially uh, for the guests. I'm going to pause it a little bit. For the guests also to, to get the idea that it's definitely a lot higher in the background. We did use these uh, enrichment items that came with the Euro pack, if I'm correct. Uh, they can be used by the doll sheep and by the alpine ibex, if I'm correct. Um, I did not actually use them per se for them to, um, uh, or place them down for them to use them. Like, I really just wanted to use them uh, to create my mountains. I think there are only two that the alpine ibex can actually really use. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this one has turned out as well with like the feeder here in the shelter area. They can also walk here on the top. And uh, yeah, I think this right one right over here and this one on the left side, they can use. This one unfortunately can't be used. There's something probably obstructing their uh, traversable area. Hopefully in the future, uh, Frontier will make them less sensitive. So. Uh, the Alpine Ibex will be able to use it because it's it's still pretty free. Like this one would be the most obvious one for me that they would be able to use. But yeah, I uh, I probably did not do my best for the traversable area, unfortunately. But yeah, also very happy with how this uh, habitat has turned out. Definitely a lot different from the uh, doll sheep habitat that we built a while back in the land of the cold area in the back of City Zoo. Um, but also a lot of fun. Uh, we definitely learned a lot since we uh, built that habitat and we caught a lot of more new stuff since then. So this one definitely um, 
really makes me happy. I uh, really, really do like this habitat and how this one has turned out. So if we continue right over here, then you obviously have like this path going up right over here. So there's another level here and one level right over here. So they can go to this roofing basically. And then uh, right, right over here, we have just some, some water. And then we go to here and we have a new restaurant. Well, this one is, uh, is the restaurant that we used more often in the zoo. I did use these statues, like unfortunately, uh, we are not really getting that many new statues with the new packs in this uh, classic style. So I thought like, okay, well, this one maybe fits best. And, um, but yeah, this is the restaurant that is also in the workshop. So if you want to use this one, this is not made with the new restaurant update. Uh, this is just two little shops right over here, a food and a drink shop. And then you have this toilet building right here in the backside. So it, it, it has what guests need, I guess, for a city zoo. You can uh, definitely use this in a lot of different places. And then we have like this seating area, a terrace, um, as we have also in the other areas. And also a little bit of sunshine for the guests to, uh, to enjoy again. Uh, so yeah, lush or not, there are definitely some areas where the guests um, can see some sunlight. It's not everywhere super dense, but I am just a huge fan of uh, putting down these trees and then have these branches like a little bit over the path and stuff. I don't know what it is. I just love that ever since uh, Planet Coaster, I guess. Uh, so here we have the follow deer habitat. A more simple habitat to be completely honest because while um, a follow deer habitat is just not really that spectacular it's a beautiful habitat definitely very happy with how this one has turned out but yeah the follow deer yeah it's probably the least exciting animals from the pack to make a habitat for but still they are my favorite animal of the pack like they are just so gorgeous i absolutely fell in love with the follow deer as soon as i saw them in my game they are just really really beautiful and they have of course like this little shelter building also a very simple one but just to make sure that they have the shelter that they would need and they also have like this uh, this little rock section right, right over here to make sure that they are able to climb a little bit if they want to. But yeah, this is basically it. This is the uh, the last follow deer or the last European habitat right over here. And then we go around here and then you have the Eurasian lynx here and the Alpine Ebex right over here. So the future plans are that we are going to, um, let's see, where are we? Okay, right over here is that restaurant that I just showed. Uh, so there is now a path going right over here to this area right over here. So we have elephants and giraffes. We have the West African lion right over here. And we have the Okapi and Warthogs right over here. Wait a second, didn't we? Oh yes, that's right. Warthogs and Art Farks we have right over here. And I was like, wait, did I make a double habitat for an Art Fark? But no, that wasn't a bias. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, uh, we're going to um, uh, finish because we only have one habitat here for a Jeep ride. Uh, there's going to be one habitat right over here with some zebras and buffaloes or something like that. Uh, a cheetah. Uh, you can't really remember. I wrote it down. <laughs> but there's going to be an African Jeep ride right over here. Just a small one fitting a city zoo, obviously. And uh, we still have some work to do right over here with the um, North America pack and North American area. This is the Little Asia area, well it's not really that little and there are still a lot more animals uh, to be added right over here around this whole area. Uh, so yeah, those, uh, those are the plans that I have so far and this was definitely that little open area that we had 
and just perfect actually for the Europe pack uh, to be added right over here. Uh, so now, yeah, I really don't know what the next DLCs are going to be for this year. I really have no idea if I, I might be able to, to, to start building here, but that depends. That really depends what kind of packs we are going to see in the future. But yeah, I'm super happy still that we are able to work in our city zoo. Definitely my precious, um, still enjoying it very much. And as long as my computer enjoys it as well, we will definitely just keep expanding this zoo until we drop, I guess. But yeah, do let me know in the comments down below what you guys uh, think of this European area tour. Hopefully it inspires you for your own zoos. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And yeah, I just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.